going on, Winnipeg? Welcome to a, a special Grey Cup Saturday edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk here from the Hammer as we count down to uh, the 110th Grey Cup tomorrow featuring the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Montreal Alouettes. Andrew Patterson, Michael Remus with you. Uh, it's been a great week so far. And again, thanks to everyone that's jumped in and uh, enjoyed the shows on Thursday and Friday. Cannot wait for the game tomorrow and hopefully a very fun show on Monday. And of course, as we always do, a big thanks to all the sponsors that make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen each and every day. Uh, Michael Remus, how you doing? Are you enjoying your first Grey Cup experience? Yeah, this is really my full first you know, f first Grey Cup. Um, you know, I was at the game in Winnipeg, but, you know, going around uh, Hamilton, you know, seeing all the signage, uh, you know, checking out all the different parties at the convention center. Uh, you know, it's a big celebration of Canadian football. I mean, you go around, people are in jerseys and gear. I mean, you see the, like, gear from Grey Cups, like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. The Baltimore Stallions. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, there was a guy at the Spirit of Edmonton last night in a full Las Vegas posse what? uniform. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So uh, it's fun here to be a part of that. But, mm. you know, the week's fun. But I think we're all here to see the Blue Bombers uh, take on Montreal on Sunday. But having said that, I mean, you can't have the game without, you know, the full week. And we've talked so much about how... Uh, and it was here in 2021, but it wasn't the full festival experience. And Hamilton is showing, you know, they're a great uh, host city here. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so this is what's coming up today. I mean, this won't be like the full two-hour show, uh, but we're going to sit down with Jeff Hamilton in a minute. Um, he and Taylor Allen have a massive piece on just the unfinished business tour that we've been talking about all season yeah. long since day one of training camp for the Bombers. So we'll sit down with that, talk about you know some of the other topics in and around the game with Hammer, and then we'll finish it off with um, we got a chance to uh, get on the field with Nick Dembski and with Willie Jefferson, two huge parts of this championship run for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So we'll have that for you a little bit later on. As far as the game goes, and I mean, I've been saying on the show all week long, what makes me nervous is just how mm -hmm. confident I am in this football team, considering the way they lost last year, um, considering the way they handled Montreal this season. Uh, and I don't know whether just we've been talking about that long enough and a lot of people are, you know, hyping up Montreal, with how they accomplished. I mean, listen, they were 11-7. and seven. They mm -hmm. didn't have a great success against Winnipeg, BC, or Toronto in the regular season, but they're here and the Argonauts are not. Um, I'm still confident in the Bombers. I still feel that they should win this game. I think that they certainly are the better team. Um, but as people remind us of big, big upsets in the CFL playoffs and in particular the Grey Cup before, you realize that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to have to play at that Winnipeg Blue Bomber level if they're going to finish the job. Yeah, well, they're favored by it started seven and a half up to eight and a half, maybe around eight. But I mean, they're significant favorites. And you've talked about how they played against Montreal uh, this season. And they're still going to have to come out and play. And you, know, you can't just, you know, you know, do kickoff and give them the great cup. I mean, they're going to have to come out. They're still going to have to execute. And look, we thought they were going to win last year against Toronto. And, you know, a couple things don't go your way. And all of a sudden, uh, Toronto's great cup champions. But as much as you think the Bombers are, you know, favorites, and uh, I don't want to say a lock to win, but we just, just look at last week. I mean, you there are no that, locks. <laughs> you, you look at last week. And I think you got to temper your expectations a little. I don't know if you wanted to reveal uh, the dream. That you well. that you had. I mean, you talk about how <laughs> talk about how confident uh, you are. But I think I think part of this is I've been uh, you know the nerves is like going. They they are going to win. They have to win. It's all leading up to this. And yeah, I crashed out for a couple hours earlier on, and I literally <laughs> I woke up. And I had a dream that we were on the show on Monday, and I'm going, how the hell did they lose? What mm -hmm. happened? That they lost. So let's just hope that that stays in this weird mind in between my ears and uh, not in reality. Um, but I don't think that there is any consideration of that within the Bomber organization right now. From the second that we got here, we're around the team on Thursday morning up until the walkthrough today, and I'm sure tomorrow, um, this team has been all business as they always are. Um, not cocky, but certainly very confident. And um, it's there for the taking to do something incredibly special that certainly has not been done in uh, most of our lifetimes. Yeah, they, they seem comfortable with being at the Grey Cup. We talked earlier this week how Montreal, you know, maybe they weren't expecting to be here or it's their, you know, a lot of their first times for the Bombers. I mean, there's not that many people on the team 
uh, who haven't been to a great cup. I mean, we talked with the, uh, the punter Jameson Sheehan, uh, rookie, who's one of the few uh, first timers here. So they've you know done all the media stuff, they've done all the walkthroughs and everything, and they know that if they just execute the game plan, they should uh, win this game. So I think experience certainly a factor, and as far as doing something special, um, you know, you're kind of living in it now, and. It, but it is hard to, you know, it's, you do need to take time to appreciate, hey, four straight Great Cups, pretty incredible after, you know, not winning for, you know, almost 30 years and, you know, losing what, and, you know, people in our chat still bring up, uh, what, 2007 and uh, 2001. 2001. Two, and, 2001. 2001. 2001 is the game that I think makes, like, just gives you pause and some nerves about being yeah. that big favorite. But I can tell you, and we talked about it with Westy earlier, um, the 2001 team and the 19, 21, 22, 23 Bombers, a very, very different beast. And I think the way that the Bombers mm -hmm. handle their business, prepare, um, you know, is, is night and day. And, I mean, again, it would be stunning if this team does not come out on top. Yeah. Much like it was in twenty in two thousand and one, um, but what is different is that this team has done it before. They've been there before. It wasn't just a great season where everyone thought that they were the best team. Yeah. It is part of a, a, a pattern of a, a championship level, both of play and of expectations. That uh, certainly they're hoping, and Bomber fans are hoping, culminates with another championship tomorrow at Tim Hortons Field. Yeah, two thousand eleven as well. We should we should mention, but. I mean, uh, going back, I mean, this is incredible, the level of excellence uh, they've achieved over the last four years. And to get here for a fourth time, pretty incredible. This doesn't happen. Zach Clare's first quarterback in CFL history, four straight uh, Grey Cup starts. And I'm, you know, when we look back at this in like, uh, you know, 10, uh, 20 years, we're going to be like, man, this is really, really special. But we're here right now. We're counting down to the game and extremely excited to see what happens here on Sunday. Yeah, um, and, you know, we'll kind of get into what we think the uh, Bomber offense is going to look like tomorrow. Of course, the depth chart did come out this morning, and as predicted mm -hmm. all week long, Dalton Schoen, game time decision, Adam Big Hill, game time decision. I think it's unlikely, highly unlikely, that either of those individuals play, but you never know. We'll talk about that coming up with uh, coming up with Jeff. Um, so uh, tomorrow's going to be game day, and folks should definitely check out, I mean, if you're not already following us on our social channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, X, TikTok, um, Sports Talk WPG. Um, we'll probably have some fun stuff and some photos from in and around the Grey Cup festivities. Um, and then again, tomorrow from the game as well. And uh, as I mentioned, as long as uh, the flights work out as planned, uh, we should be back in the nick of time to fire things up on Monday at 1 o'clock back in Winnipeg for uh, what, fingers crossed, will be a very jubilant edition of, uh, of WST. Um, we'll look forward to a great one tonight uh, out in a town. And then, of course, what we really came for, that's the Bombers in the Grey Cup tomorrow. Um, so uh, great to have you all with us on a special edition of WST. We're uh, going to sit down with Jeff Hamilton right now and stay tuned for Willie Jefferson and Nick Dembski. And by the way, you did mention that chat we had with Jameson Sheehan. Um, that is posted separately on the YouTube channel. If you've missed it, check it out. Um, it was just a great conversation. It was one of the more interesting members of the club, an Australian, one of the few rookies on this team playing his first great cup. So check that as well on the WST channel if you missed it already. But uh, great to have you all with us leading into the game. Hopefully you have an awesome awesome Grey Cup wherever you're watching it and uh, stick around. We've got Jeff Hamilton coming up next as well as Nick Dembski and Willie Jefferson here on Winnipeg Sports Talk from the 110th Grey Cup in Hamilton. Grey Cup Saturday in the hammer with the hammer. Jeff Hamilton of the Winnipeg Free Press. We're going to get to the game and everything but it is Grey Cup week. First of all, are you having fun Jeff? How's, that? How's the week been? Great Cup Week is the perfect, well, I think the goal of Great Cup Week is to find the perfect balance between having fun and working. And, and it's funny because working is a lot of fun because there's a lot of people here that you try to compete with. It's, it's one of those rare moments that 
uh, or events that there's a ton of media there and that, you know you're all kind of chasing the same storylines you're trying to find you're, and break stories you're trying to do you know you're trying to outwork in other people so it's a ton of work but it also obviously is a ton of fun and you know as I was <laughs> kind of saying off 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 mic you there's ebbs and flows to the week so there's always the media party <laughs> on Wednesday and then last night was kind of the night you go out because you try to take it easy tonight oh, so yeah. I don't know like I've definitely learned my lessons and how many great cups I've been at but uh, fun is certainly at the top of uh, of this week for sure. you guys have been working we'll get to a massive piece that uh, you guys have in uh, the Winnipeg Free Press today heading into the Grey Cup in a minute um, I have to say I wasn't here in 2021 uh, and that of course was sort of the COVID Grey Cup coming out of it but I've really enjoyed being around Hamilton I mean, this is a this is a city that is has a lot of the identity of the Canadian Football League in it and uh, you know as we've gone through from Thursday to yesterday now into the day before the game uh, I mean uh, we're right back at it with a great great cup with great representation from all sorts of fans around the uh, around the league and uh, um, that should lead into what should be a great game tomorrow. But uh, but this is a great place for the Grey Cup, I have to say. Oh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have set the standard on the field, right? But the Hamilton Tiger Cats have set the standard for the Grey Cup. And it started in 2021. And, and you know, they created us a bit of a pissing contest. Because in 2021, I mean, this, we're back here this year because 2021, they didn't get the full shebang, right? They they got some of their, they, obviously it was a, it was a great, great cup because it, it was right after COVID. Obviously COVID was still going on, but it was at that time where you were able to go out and meet, see people and whatever. So it had that to it, but you always knew that they, they, um, they didn't pull out all the stops that this was the year that it was going to happen. And, uh, you know, just as the, you know, a media party I mentioned, that was at the Hamilton Club. You know what I mean? The, the, the nicest place downtown. They have Carrie Underwood here. They have LL Cool J here. They have, they have, uh, your favorite Shaggy. Yeah, yeah, Shaggy, of course. Yeah, Shaggy as well. And, and the events are top notch. Everything, you know, from the stadium to, to the, the parties, you know, in and around the area, like everything is, it has been top notch here. And, and I said, you know, that <clears throat> they've set the standard. Well, Amar Doman is going to be getting it next year in BC. Oh, I was and just I'm, talking to the BC guys today. I mean, they are all in on next year and taking and a lot of. They're money. looking at what's happening here as the yeah. bar, and they're going to raise it. And I and I don't think I have to tell you or any of the viewers <laughs> here, but in 2025, <clears throat> Wade Miller is not going to get beat when it comes to throwing <clears throat> a, a Great Cup party. So that really is one of the greatest things right now is that you have a bunch of teams that want to one up each other. Uh, and like I said, I think it certainly started in Hamilton. It is a good thing, and you know, we were down in around the convention center earlier this afternoon and uh, great crowd for the parade and I guess it was sort of great cup parade Santa Claus parade but I mean tons and tons of fans and lots of people just from the community getting out so um, uh, you know hopefully we continue I'm sure I can guarantee frankly it continues through the rest of Saturday and into uh, the big game tomorrow of course the Bombers did have their walk through this morning um, I, I, I kind of laugh at times just how business like this team is I mean they have been here before they're on the same script uh, doing it all but um, I said on the show a couple days ago listen I'm just gonna give you the depth chart right now let's not wait for the team to come out game time decision Dalton Schoen game time decision um, for Adam Big Hill lo and behold they're there in their starting positions but with the GTD uh, have we learned any is there any reason to think that either of these guys will be able to play or is this just the way the Bombers do it? It's definitely just the way the Bombers do it. I mean, you heard Mike O'Shea talk about it today. Um, Mike O'Shea will, if, you, if I know anything about Mike O'Shea, he will do whatever he can within the rules that will benefit his team. And, and the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. is they don't have to declare, you know, a game time decision until like 30 minutes before the game goes. And so, well, I, I, I am convinced that you could lose your foot and, and Mike O'Shea would not rule out the possibility of, of finding a way to give you an opportunity to play. Do I think Adam Big Hill is going to play tomorrow on Sunday? Absolutely not. I don't think there's a chance. Like, I, I really don't. I would be surprised. I tweeted that it, I think it would be a miracle. We haven't seen him there. We haven't seen him at practice. Uh, we know... It was a non-contact injury. We know what those, yeah. you know, things can tend to lead to. But I just, ha I have no idea. I think the <clears throat> Dalton Schoen situation is the interesting one because yeah. we're led to believe that he might have been kind of close last week in the, for the West Final. And so, you know, I think it would have been obviously a better sign had he 
participate in one single practice this week. That That's not great, but we also know there's nothing left to leave out there after Sunday. For so, sure. uh, and, and I, you know, I've talked about this, I've written about this. This team will go to all lengths to give somebody an opportunity. And we've seen in the past, whether it was Matt Nichols in 2017 or other players after that, that were suspected to be out for six to eight weeks and got back within two and a half, three weeks because they do everything and anything possible to get them back. That being said, I think you have to look at Dalton Schoen as absolutely doubtful. I just, something is not working or something is not going right to not have him on the field. And I just don't think that you can trust him to just go from zero to a hundred in the biggest game of the season um, you know, without any of that prep. Let me ask you this, just from a football perspective. Um, let's let's say for a minute that Dalton Schoen, good to go okay. and in the lineup, even if he's not a hundred percent. Just from a perspective of having even more for Montreal to worry about, how beneficial would that to be him? Just because you know what this guy can do. Um, and the amount of attention that a Dalton Schoen would take and what that might do for other guys in the lineup. No, oh, it'd be a nightmare for Montreal. I mean, like, if, are you suggesting like even as a decoy? Like if you can't yeah, get 100%? Yeah, I mean, listen, he's probably or... not going crazy, but just having him out there oh. if he was there. Same story for Biggie, and yeah. I think that's like, the reality is, is and it looks like if, if, if Adam Big Hill can't go, Shane Gauthier will get the start. And they'll, they'll also have Lee Clements as an option. They'll have Brian Cole as, as a fill-in. You might see more of a rotation, but I do believe All Shane, those guys took yeah, reps and yeah, practice and I do, this week. And I do believe Shane Gauthier gets to start. Well, Shane Gauthier isn't really a massive step down when it comes to physical, you know, I mean, it's kind of weird to compare with physical fitness, but Shane Gauthier, if you don't, if you recall a couple years back, came completely across the field in that West Final in Regina and saved the, the Bombers' season. So he's got the Incredible ability. Play. Exactly. He's got the ability to go east mm -hmm. and west. He, he has the skill set to do that. What you miss with Shane Gochi versus an Adam Big Hill is the presence. And so to your point about Dalton Schoen, it's the same story for both of them. Those guys, you know, particularly with, with Adam, is that he brings that energy. He literally is the heart and soul of this defense, and guys get confident just seeing him there. And of course he makes plays in that. But I would say the same thing about Dalton Schoen. I just don't know if you can bring him in and be a decoy. If he's coming in, he's going to be full bore. And so having him on your roster, a guy who is arguably, I mean, we hear a lot about Kenny Lawler being the best receiver in the league. Dalton Schoen very well could be the best receiver in the league. So to get him in the lineup, that would be a, a significant boost for this club. Um, all that being said, I think we don't expect him to play. And uh, it means a lot more on Kenny Lawler. Um, I, I really do think that Kenny Lawler... I mean, listen, it might be a lot of Brady Oliveira. I mean, the team might go out with the w same way that they approach the British Columbia Lions, trying to establish Brady, dominance on the offensive line. If they can do that, you can really manage a football game from an offensive perspective like Zach did last week. Um, do you think that that'll be the, sort of the way that they go with the business, almost the same plan against BC? Or um, considering that I think everyone is expecting that, do they maybe give Zach a chance to uh, go out and really put his stamp on the game right out of the gate in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, I don't think they're going to fool themselves. Like, I don't think they're going to be like, okay, you know, Brady Oliveira was Brady Oliveira all season long. I mean, there's a reason why he was the West Division nominee for Most Outstanding Player and, of course, Most Outstanding Canadian because of what he did. And you're going to want your offense to go through Brady Oliveira. And I would say there's even added importance because if, if Montreal is going to win this game, they're going to do it the exact same way they won the West Final against Toronto, and they're going to do exactly it the exact same way they won the, the, the East semifinal mm -hmm. against Hamilton. And that's mm -hmm. on the backs of their defense. And their defense are takeaway monsters. And so if Zach, if, if they have any chance, it's probably forcing Zach to throw the ball. Because right now, if you're the Bombers, of course you want Brady Oliveira to rack up. And I think they're going to load the box like we saw with BC at the second half. And they're going to try to take that game away from Winnipeg and force Zach Calaris to to beat them with his arm, which sounds crazy, doesn't it? Like, oh. don't you want Zach Chris? But that's I think. Be that's careful what you wish for. Hundred <laughs> percent. But I also think if you look at those two games, a lot of that momentum that 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 Montreal mm -hmm. established, that confidence was immediately. Both the defense had key turnovers early in the game, including a pick six you know, against Toronto on that very first drive. And so I think if you're Winnipeg, you're trying to establish the run, you're not running away from the run, because if you want to get in a duel, a defensive duel, hmm. bring it on, is the Bombers thing. Like you think, you know, they, if you want to, why would we, why would the Bombers, this is like them saying, why would the Bombers want to uh, 
go to throw the ball through the air and, and, and play into their strengths. Now, they're going to do their own thing, but if they want to do a ground attack, because it's funny, we, we're hearing a ton about the Alouettes' defense. The Bombers' defense is a pretty darn good unit. And the last time I checked, they had nine sacks against Vernon Adams. Yeah, left. just ask Montreal's offense. They put what? up two field goals against them in two games. Exactly. And so I think if, if, if you're Winnipeg, yeah, you just don't want to outthink yourselves. You don't want to say, okay, they're going to be focusing on Brady. Of course they're going to focus on Brady. I'll take a, a comment from Matthew Betts last week in the West Final. You, like... People are asking, well, do you think you're going to have to focus on Brady Oliveira? And he goes, yeah, we're going to have to focus on Brady Oliveira, just like we're going to have to focus on Kenny Lawler, just like we're going to have to focus on Zach Clares, just like we're going to have to focus on, on all the team's playmakers. So if I'm Winnipeg, I'm certainly leaning on that run game and, and allowing it to be a bit of defensive battle because I'm taking Zach Clares and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers over Cody Fajardo and, and his offense. Um, you know, speaking of Zach Caleros, and you were mentioning this to me before we got going, um, you know, Zach has a, a special place for Jason Moss. And I mean, listen, Moss and Fajardo being in this spot, I mean, it really is a great story for a, a franchise that, you know, had such a great run with Calvillo and, you know, hasn't had that sort of success lately. Um, but Zach really gives Moss a lot of credit for in a lot of ways showing him the ropes in the Canadian Football League in a situation that he really wasn't getting that opportunity with his club. Yeah, I can't wait to get into that. But just the first thing you said, Huss, everyone keeps talking about the Bombers being a great story to win. And of course they're a great story to win. They cement their dynasty, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be officially known in CFL lore for a long time if they win Sunday. But if the Montreal Alouettes win this game, they might be one of the greatest single season turnarounds in league history. I'll remind viewers that it was during the off season last year that the CFL took over ownership of the team and general manager Danny Machocha did not know if he had allowance to go out and get players. They lost Trevor Harris. They lost Gino, uh, Gino Lewis, their number one receiver and their number one quarterback. And so that's, a, that's wild. But Jason Moss, he might have been the biggest bet gamble, if you will, that, that Danny Machocha did. He left. He was the scapegoat with, 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 along with, with Saskatchewan Cody. along with Cody. And so to, to, your, to your thing, it's a great story. I'll be writing about it today is that um, – Jason Moss, anyone that knows him knows how passionate. They certainly know him from being a head coach in Edmonton, and you know, and he's definitely tempered that. But, but he got his start in 2012 with the Toronto Argonauts, and one of his backup quarterbacks was, was Zach Kolaris. Now, it's, what's really interesting is that Rookie Ray used to get every single rep at practice. Every single one. Like, that's unheard of today. But he got every single one. The Peyton Manning treatment. Peyton Manning treatment. And so what... What Jason Moss would do is he and him and, and, and Zach would, would meet up after practice and they'd go through the entire game script. Like Jason Moss was the quarterback's coach, obviously took his job straight. He's not getting paid extra to do this. He just w saw somebody. It wasn't, he didn't just see someone with talent, he saw someone who was willing to join him. And so they would do this week in and week out. Zach would go throughout practices, not get any reps, not work with the offense whatsoever. And it's so critical because you need to learn that stuff early. And so they again they would they would get together after practice they go through the game script they get together before the actual game and visualize so a lot of the stuff I had in a piece with Zach a couple of weeks ago about his process well we never talked about Jason Moss that was part of what he was doing and and and, and so he credits you know I talked to Zach today he credits Jason Moss for not you know for his success at the beginning you know for where he is today is the, the what he did with him at the beginning is the is one of the reasons why he is here today, and so it's just an incredible story, and um, and it really is. Jason Moss hasn't changed. He he will do anything for his players, and in a lot of ways, he's exactly like Mike O'Shea when it comes to how he interacts with players, what he'll do for his players, the the extra mile, if you will, um, to to support them and improve them. And I think that's it's no surprise, even though obviously Toronto's a great team, to see these two clubs, the last two clubs standing. Well, and and, and I mean, um, you know, you you were making the comment that there are a lot of similar in the identities of these teams and that hasn't been the case in recent Bomber Grey Cup matchups and listen I mean pro sports often we talk about being copycat leagues mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure you could try and emulate a more successful organization right now in the CFL than what's happening in Winnipeg um, but with Machocha and particularly Moss in that locker room with those 53 um, 
they are doing a lot of bomber type things to uh, try to establish a new way, a, a new level of success in Montreal. Well, that's all the it, it's authenticity of your head coach, w who your head coach is, what he brings to the table. His personality is the personality of the team, and that's a situation that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are trying to figure out right now in their hiring process of their head coach. You need to bring somebody in who is going to set the bar, who is going to be able, to, it, it, it's twofold. It's not like you just bring somebody in who's a good talker and who can command a room. You need to bring in a guy who can do all of that, but then back it up with his work ethic, back it up with his level of preparedness. Show the players what that, like be, be the, be the role model to those players, set the bar for those players in what you expect them to work. And so, you know, you mentioned the personality things. And so having been at the last four great cups with Winnipeg here, there's a very there was a very huge difference in 2019 in Calgary. The bombers were 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 quiet. They were, you know, they they, they didn't talk a lot, but um, they were very determined. And I could tell, and I, you know, I, I know it sounds ridiculous to say hello. I said on day two, I said, I think the Winnipeg Blue Bombers beat the Thai Cats because the Thai Cats were kind of cocky. Like, kind of were oh, a yeah. little, you know what I mean? And, and so it was a similar vibe in 2021. And then last year, even though Winnipeg was the, was the, was the big favorite, Toronto was kind of the cocky team. Like, they had the swag. And, I mean, they ended up winning, you know, good for them. But there was a different personality to them. Where, where I'm seeing these two teams, and, again, it has everything to do with Mike O'Shea and, and Jason Moss, to which they coached together in that 2012 season in Toronto too. So they know each other well. Um, their personalities are being reflected <clears throat> through their players. And those personalities is accountability. Those personalities are, are uh, gratitude, appreciation for being here, seizing the moment, living in the moment. They're saying the exact same things. You know, it's almost weird going from one, one presser to another because they're saying the same thing. And, you know, obviously different rosters, different makeup, but that, that will there. And I don't think, just given how prepared Mike O'Shea is and how prepared Jason Moss is, whoever wins that game, it will not be uh, because they weren't ready. And I think that's what's going to make Sunday's game such, a, such a, a cool one. Who knows how it ends up? But I know that these teams are studying each other and are ready to go. Well, needless to say, uh, myself and uh, all the Bomber fans here and back home are hoping that we're going to be talking about three Grey Cups and four trips and a Bomber win tomorrow. Um, we on the show, sort of from the first day of training camp, have sort of been talking about this as an unfinished business tour mm -hmm. for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Um, you and Taylor Allen did a phenomenal job with the real long read. Bomber fans, it is must-see in the Winnipeg Free Press. Um, uh, maybe tease it a little bit and talk about what you got into in, uh, in the mode of unfinished business for a team that came so close to winning three in a row last year and I think has been thinking about that result every time they took the field, whether it be for a game or a practice all season long. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, right? Because I think that our focus on this, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, obviously it's the road to redemption, which speaks to the disappointing result last year that, that essentially postponed the title of, of a dynasty. And so you come into this year and, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of familiar faces. Continuity has been one of the most important part, parts of, 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 of Winnipeg's success. But every year, is different. Every team is different, right? This team, they got some older, older players, older core players. They're another year older, and so looking back at the piece, what we do is we we look at everything that went different this year. You know what I mean? Everything that that was that was it, this year was so unique in, in a lot of different ways, right? From the work that was being done in the off season to the conversations that were being done in the off season, it wasn't let's put our feet up and send a guy a message two weeks from now saying I love you. I can't believe we did what we did. You know, it was we need to get back to work. And so it's taught. You know, the piece goes through talks about some of that work was done between Wade Miller, C CEO and president, obviously general manager Kyle Walters, um, head coach Mike O'Shea, and, and you know. And, and, and just how they got, how they built that in the offseason and then through the season. I mean, there's a lot of things about this team. Look at the secondary. I mean, Winston Rose isn't playing in the, in the, in the Grey Cup because Jamal Parker stepped up. Evan Holm became an all-star in, within one, with one, you know, within, in his second season. Monster season for Holm this You have Demario Houston leading the CFL in interceptions. Like, the blueprint to the bomber success is relying on young guys in the secondary. That again happened. You look at, you look at all, the, all the obstacles this team went through. Ky, Kyrie Wilson never started this season. You had Malik Clements coming in. You had, you know, you had... Um, 
just complete change. You had Dalton, you had Kenny Lawler dealing with with his, you know, uh, impaired driving charge that from from years before. He missed the first thing. Dalton Schoen hasn't played, you know. So they've gone through these these this adver- Mike Miller on the eve of, of of the season. They were told they were not having Mike Miller for the rest of the year. He's the all time goat. In, in special teams tackles in the heart and so he's the he's the Adam Big Hill of special teams and then they then they didn't have Go, uh, Shane Gauthier for twelve games and they didn't have Janarian Grant for ten games so it, it's and 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 while you bring up these things the expectations remain the same <laughs> they remain the same Bomber fans have become spoiled they won't accept anything less than victory and so we go into some of the psychological part of that I would say fans but I would also say. Every person in that room, Mike O'Shea, Kyle Walters, Wade Miller. I mean, that is the expectation. Um, And they've earned the right, I think, with the way they played this season and in the past number of years to set the bar that high. And that is how they judge themselves and how this season will be. 100% Hus, but at the same time, when you have that expectation, there comes pressure with it. And And those challenges I mentioned and we go through in the story, we, we get into the psychological part a little bit about the, you know, we don't know how close this team is, but it's deeper than that, right? We, we find out what that it factor is. And then, of course, we ended up with, we ended up by saying what, you know, looking, taking a close look at what it would mean if they win on Sunday. And so it was a really cool piece to do. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. This week's already crazy hectic. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to share it with Taylor Allen um, and, and really to, to experience it with the rest of the players and really take a, a, a zoom in look of what happened in Winnipeg this year and 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 it is a special year and we know I don't know names we know guys have told players that they're going to retire this at the end of this season so there and so like I said continuity has been been an important piece of this puzzle but every team is is unique and how much longer is this run going to be because every good thing comes to an end eventually maybe they got another year in them or so but what a special year it was because because of uh, you know i think a lot of people thought maybe the run might be over well and, and and i mean you see that and listen i think that maybe so much of the continuity and the same guys coming back stems from the way that they lost in that game last year um but it's it does feel like it is inevitable that there'll be more change next year um with this football team and um, yeah, I think probably a good portion of the core will remain, but um, for these guys, so many of them together, uh, they talk about the opportunity to earn one more week with these guys, the way they feel about each mm-hmm. other and play for each other. Um, this could be a last hurrah for uh, a number of those players, and uh, I think that raises the stakes even more for the game. Yeah, I think I'm with you. Like, I think it benefited them in a weird way that they lost last year. Because I don't think anyone wanted to go out that way. Uh, No one wanted to move on that way. Because, I mean, you win three in a row, you're probably thinking, okay, kind of did my job in Winnipeg. Time to get paid elsewhere, Mm -hmm. right? Is Rasheed Bailey coming back for the number that he had if they won again last season? Probably, maybe. I don't know, you know. And and so, you know, you look at, at changes. I mean, changes on the field. Huss. There could be a massive shakeup in the in in the front offices there, right? I mean, the, oh. you know, like the, this is this is, this is the problem, and there's, there's been a lot of talk about the the non football operations cap this week being at you know it's about two point six million. It fits in all the coaches and general managers, and weirdly enough, the equipment staff. Like, I think that's such a such a what? ridiculous thing by the CFL. But I digress. Um, the reality is, and it's interesting to talk to Kyle Walters because. Buck, you know, I'll use his words. Buck Pierce deserves to be the most, the highest paid offensive coordinator. Richie Hall deserves to be the highest paid defensive coordinator. Um, Mike O'Shea deserves to be the highest paid head coach. But you can't make them all that and fit it under under the cap. And I think it's, well, you know, certainly Wade Miller was part of this group. I mean, all the presidents were. They got together and they agreed on this, and they continue to agree on it. So it's not like, you know, like as a collective. I'm not saying there aren't individuals in that room. I imagine Wade Miller would want this this cap to go up a little bit so he could afford, you know, his, his uh, you know, paying his coaches yeah. and staff that, including Kyle Walters, who doesn't have a contract for next year. So, you know, it, it is an interesting dynamic, but there is change on the horizon. And and, and you can't keep this up all the time. Um, but you we've seen some of the, like, you know, I mentioned the young secondary. I mentioned a guy like Brady Oliveira. Brady Oliveira is going to be testing the NFL. Whether he, he gets a shot or not, he's under he's under a contract. Or sorry, he's not under a contract for next year. He, he he told me he's pursuing the NFL. 
again, whether or not that happens. So there, there is a lot of potential for this team to look nothing like it was. Um, I'm not going to say it's going to be drastically different. You know guys are going to want to come back regardless because regardless of the success, us, yeah. right? And this is part of the, 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 uh, of, this, of the success is the Bombers treat their players better than anybody else. Like, you know, the stuff, the lengths they go to. Guys like Darren Cameron have, you know, he's so valuable to this organization. Like, what he does behind the scenes, what he does to, to get players involved, what he does for player signings. This is a guy, this is a guy who does a, a lion's share of the business and, 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 executes the vision that you know Wade has for the families they have dinners after games so you know it's the it's the culture inside the locker room no doubt but it's the culture outside mm -hmm. and within the organization and how, how welcoming it is to families, how, how, how important it is to treat everybody with, with respect and all those things. That's the reason why they put the band back together every day. Problem is, man, some of these guys are getting to mid-late 30s. And, and whether they, you know, whether they want to put, bring these guys back or not, their bodies aren't going to let them. So it's been a fascinating run here, but I do trust that you know, in time, they're going to find holes or, or holes to fill. And, and, and maybe this does go on for a bit. But this definitely, this year feels, in a lot of ways, you know, my roundabout answer to your question, it does feel a little bit like the last hurrah. Well, uh, 60 minutes of football to, uh, you know, put an exclamation point on a dynastic period of Blue Bomber football, one of the greatest era, eras in well, certainly in recent CFL history. I mean, I think we go back to, you know, Edmonton in the 80s. Certainly Montreal had a nice run. Um, but for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, um, you know, right up there with Bud Grant in the 60s. And, I mean, the Cal Murphy years was a little different. I mean, they were consistently good. Um, but, you know, to win four Western Division finals speaks for itself. Hasn't been done since the 70s, 80s. And uh, one more time to do it to make it three great cups for this group. Uh, congratulations to you and Taylor again on that awesome piece right. today. Folks, make sure to check it out in the Winnipeg Free Press. And uh, I imagine... Uh, Monday's paper is going to be uh, chock full of uh, a lot more from Hamilton and the Great Cup with uh, with you and TA. Yeah, it certainly feels like Christmas Eve today. You know, I, I you know I think it's going to be a, an awesome game. We didn't mention this, but the weather's just been damn terrific here. Yeah. So everything about this week's been great. And um, well, it's certainly a lot about the days leading into the game. This game's setting up to be pretty special. And uh, you know, I think for Bomber fans, um, you know, I wish I hope the best for them. It's been a hell of a ride to cover this team, to see, you know, to have a, in a lot of ways a front row seat to their success and to see a lot of players grow and, and, and just be appreciative, man. I mean, that's, I think, the CFL is such an awesome league. It's such a, it's such a unique Canadiana league. I always say if you can get them there and you can get them to watch, people will always stay. And, you know, and, and this week, is, uh, this week is, a, is a prime opportunity to reflect on that and, and, and just appreciate the three-down game and, and the people who are around it. You know, it's funny you say that about getting people into the league from, you know, being a fan of the football it's the exact same way with the culture of the party that the Grey Cup mm -hmm. is people might not know what it is but once they get out there and be a part of it that's how you get guys that have been coming back for 20 years 25 years because they want to be a part of it and uh, we'll look forward to seeing a little bit more of that tonight and then what we really came for and that's the Bombers in the Grey Cup tomorrow Hammer, great to see you as always. Always a pleasure, man. Glad you're down. Uh, folks, uh, we're going to continue a little bit. A special WST Grey Cup Sunday with uh, some conversations we had earlier with Nick Dembski and Willie Jefferson heading into tomorrow's Grey Cup 5 p.m. kickoff in Winnipeg. And uh, again, Monday, we will be back. Um, all travel plans going accordingly in time for a one o'clock show with the full recap and uh, make sure to stay tuned for the social channels for everything else that we've got going on coming out of Hamilton um, but in the meantime we'll get ready for the game before that Nick Dembski and Willie Jefferson here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, Winnipeg Sports Talk back at Tim Hortons Field with Nick Dembski of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as we count down to kickoff on Sunday. First things first, great to see you. Usually we're doing this on Zoom yeah, or uh, the bumping virtual into world. each other. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Looking great. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. You know what? I'm just you know getting out the little kinks and, and nicks and, and whatnot, and I'll be good to go by Sunday. Um, you know, we've uh, it's. Uh, 
I mean, listen, Bomber fans almost spoiled that we've been doing this for four consecutive seasons. But I imagine for a player, especially a Winnipeg-born guy, this stuff never gets old, does it? Never gets old. I mean, I love being here. You know, this is the last week of the season. It's the best. You get to bond with your team for a whole week before you go out there and kick some butt on, on the weekend. So I'm just taking it all in, man. You know, I, I like uh, feel like I'm almost like a vet during this Grey Cup week. I've been here for four years now. So, you know, obviously, you know that the ins and outs of Grey Cup week and, and you know how many distractions it brings and all the ups and downs and the b busy days and late nights. But, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just prepared for this now. Well, let me ask you about that because this team you know we always talk about it, the the level of professionalism um you know to the game to each other that your team has had and i think that's a a huge reason why we're talking about four straight western division championships but you know as you've grown as a player and as a leader on this team how much do the previous years the experience including the loss in last year's great cup sure. how much has that shaped this year's team the focus that you have going into uh, the finale on sunday no doubt for a lot i mean you know what experience you know experience adds confidence and uh you know a lot of these guys on this team you know obviously have been here you know there's a low turnover rate obviously since 2019 to, to now so you know we we know what to expect um talking about last year I mean you know what I always love to say you know you turn a loss into a lesson you know you learn from it you learn from your mistakes and, and you grow from it so I feel like this team has done that you know we've uh, watched the film corrected it from last year so you know now it's we've moved on from it this is a whole new year a whole new opportunity to come out and and, uh, and tackle our main goal uh, you've been here before, obviously, in 2021. Now it's back. Obviously, I mean, a much bigger Grey Cup celebration. But for you guys, I imagine this is very similar. You've done this before. The uh, schedule, very similar. A little bit more media, a little bit more fun around it. But at the end of the day, this is a work week. And um, it, it seems like this team is incredibly focused and always well prepared. That's just it, man. Yeah, you, I mean, you know, that that's just it. You know, you, you definitely got to ride the wave this week. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things to do, a lot of, you know, a lot of media a lot of you know distractions that, that you could get yourself into especially for the guys that, that aren't really prepared to play for this game but at the end of the day I mean it's it's just a week you know how we see it, a week to bond and a week to get everybody better and everybody on the same page you know if everybody's bought in that's just going to add to the team rather than you know only 80 percent of us bought in so you know what we just tell the young guys you know just just stick to the course and then you know hopefully by next year you know that we're going to be riding here again. Uh, Nick Dembski with us uh, before the Grey Cup 110 in Hamilton against the Montreal Alouettes on Sunday. Um, I, I have to ask, you've been playing on this team for a number of years. You've seen this defense play at a really high level. Uh, what was it like being on the sidelines watching what your defensive teammates did to the BC Lions and Vernon oh, Adams on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, you know what, our defense comes up to play. You know, they, uh, they've they been doing that. You know, it's no secret. You know, I think uh, with, the, with, you know, BC, you know, explosive offense. I don't, you know, I think probably people around the league didn't expect that, but we knew what they were going to come out in here and do, and, and they did a great job of doing it. I mean, they got turnovers, they got sacks, they got points, their special teams got points. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, kudos to them. Uh, this is a team offensively that uh, everyone's got a piece of it. I mean, it starts with that offensive line up front. Obviously, Brady's had a monster year. Zach, uh, receivers in and out. There have been some injuries as of late. Uh, when you look at the challenge at hand, um, is there is there anything different with it being Montreal, or is it just a matter of we've got a game plan? Everyone step up, be their best, and execute. That's just it, man. I mean, this is this is the last week to let it all hang out. So at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't matter who we're playing. You know, we got to play our best football. This is the biggest game. We got to play our best football. We got to prep. You know, one thing that, that we say is, you know, we can't change the process. And that, that means trying to go 1-0, and or that means going 1-0 and at the end of each week. So it doesn't matter who's, who's who we're lining up against at the end of the day. We're here playing the championship game. we got to come out here with a win. Nick, we always love chatting with you on the program, and hopefully we can do this again next week surrounding a big party back no in your doubt. hometown yes, after sir. getting yes, the job sir. done. Let's make it up. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Winnipeg Sports Talk is not doing Great Cup Week without speaking to this man, the land shark, Willie Jefferson. Uh, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> uh, how are you? How are you feeling after that big win uh, in front of the home fans last Saturday against BC? Man, I'm excited. Uh, it's been hard trying to, trying to stay calm and cool and collected and things like that during practice, during meetings, during all uh, like media stuff photo shoots and stuff like that man i like I'm, I'm just excited to be here in hamilton again for the great cup holding it down for winnipeg is up hey speaking of winnipeg uh what a game last saturday 
We'll get to you and your defensive teammates' performance in a moment, but uh, you're a guy that likes to get that crowd going. That crowd was absolutely on fire from the start till the finish. Where did that one rank as far as the help you guys got from uh, from the fans packing IG Field? I mean, that's number one. You know, uh, for one, I want to say thank you for all the fans that showed up, uh, helped sell out the crowd, uh, fill the stands. Uh, for number two, I want to say thank you for all the noise that you guys brought. If you can, please bring it down to Hamilton. We need it. We want it. We love it. And uh, for three, man, it was it was absolutely amazing. Like I would rank that number one, right after you know 20, uh, 22's Western Final. You know it was cold that cold that year, but everybody still showed up and had to, had the stands rocking. Last weekend the stands was absolutely shaking. I could hear it. You know, on the field, it was hard to, to try to calm them down when Zach was on the field. You know, like the Jumbotron had the little signs and everything <laughs> saying, please, you know, offense is at work. But, you know, our fans are are, are, are are the greatest in the league, man. We travel well, especially, you know, for the Great Cup and stuff like that. So I don't expect anything less but perfection from our fans. You and uh, you and your defense really seem to feed off it. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, didn't give BC a lot of time to have long conversations in the huddle. But... Bottom line, when the ball was snapped, that was almost as good as it gets for the Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Uh, where does that defensive performance as a team, with everyone getting a piece of it, rank amongst uh, the best that you remember as a Bomber? I mean, that was probably that was probably our best performance. That was probably our best performance. Uh, other than I don't know, have we? I, I think have we shut anybody out? Just like like Goose said. Uh, Montreal only got three points um, on offense in that uh, game that was 47-17. Well, you know. Close. It was almost close to perfection. You know, we, we gave up, I want to say we gave up three points in the second half. Three points in the second half, and then we gave up that, that, that touchdown at the beginning. That was about it. So, you know what I'm saying? That was that was, that was was luck, too. So Yeah, I, I'm, it was like we had a lot of fun talking about Jer Vernon Adams, and credit to him for being a warrior and staying most up there. Most definitely. I mean, yeah, that was, uh, he was terrorizing him basically the entire time. It's nine sacks, and you're getting in Jackson, Jeffcoat, linebackers, DBs. Um, I imagine that uh, that sort of ferocity from the Bomber defense uh, you guys plan on bringing right here at Tim Hortz Field on Sunday? Most definitely. Got to bring it back again, man. If, that's something that that's something that we love doing. We love bringing pressure, especially from the defensive end standpoint. Love bringing pressure from the linebackers. You know what I'm saying? As long as we, you know, keep communicating, keep playing at a uh, at a high clip, keep listening to Coach Richie, we, we good. I uh, Willie, I joke with the Nick Dembski that this stuff, uh, you know, getting to the big game, and this is why you play it. It never gets old. But I have to ask you, you know, as a veteran player that's been with this organization for a long time, that's had so much success. Um, how special is it to know that you guys are on the verge of removing any doubt of a dynasty um, and, and maintaining that level of excellence and consistency four straight years coming back to this game? Man, we're, not, we, we're not worried about it at all. Like, that's something, that's something that, that we let you guys worry talk about. Talk about after the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll talk about that stuff on the plane ride home. Like, once somebody brings it up, you know, like us as players, the staff, the the coaches, and things like that. Don't nobody nobody brings that type of stuff up until we hear from the media. It's about going one and zero on Sunday. Going one and zero, man. Like we we can care less about we can care less about you know uh, titles or accolades or all like any of that stuff, man. Like it's 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 an honor and a privilege to have all those things to be a part of all those things. But until we do what we came here to do, all that stuff is just noise in the wind. Uh, let me ask you about uh, Adam Big Hill. I mean, he's been a teammate of yours ever since you've been here. Uh, one of the great leaders in Bomber and CFL history. And there is question as to whether he'll be able to go. Um, if he's unable to go, um, how much of a rallying point is that for the other guys that will be out there on the field? Oh, it was a big. It's a big. It's a big step up for those guys. But Bigs. Being the person he is, being the leader that he is, being the great teammate that he is, he's gonna he's gonna have those guys ready to do exactly what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to do it, when they're supposed to do it, ready to lock in on keys and calls and formation adjustments and everything. Like, you know, Biggs is gonna be on the sideline, whether he's dressed or not, he's gonna be on the sideline, he's gonna be locked in, he's gonna be focused, he's gonna be tuned in, so dialed in, all those, all those things. So when we 
as a defense come off the field onto the sideline, he's going to be there ready to talk and let us know what he's seen, what uh, changes we need to, what changes we need to make, what checks we need to make when we get back on the field and be there. Willie Jefferson with us. Uh, this is a unique week. Uh, you're on the road. You come out early. Um, how much how, is there? Is it fun for you? Is there a lot of time that you ha have for fun, or uh, does the intensity sort of ramp up as you get closer to game? No, nah, you find time for fun. You know, especially in between meetings, in between uh, media. You guys seem to have a lot of fun together. Just in exactly. General. That's what I'm saying. Like you got to, like you got to find, you got to find time to have fun. And then, like the the the, the most important part about that is you got to find time to have fun with your teammates because you we're not here with family and friends or you know it's not a it's not it's not no work vacation trip or nothing like that we're here to work we're here to you know handle business but at the same time when you get your free time spend that time with your teammates spend that time with some guys that you're not going to be around for the next six six to eight months you know when you're back at home in the off season like this is our time this is still our time this is still time for us to get closer as a team get closer as friends get closer as you know teammates and things like that time for you to learn something new about somebody that you have absolutely no idea about and that's something that we we take full advantage of we take pride in that and you know uh something that's something that coach O'Shea pushes on us you know like find somebody that's not in your position group and you know go have lunch or have breakfast like you know we have breakfast at the at the hotel but you know sit down and have breakfast and and and, and talk to somebody that you don't usually talk to you know because you're not going to be able to see them in the, like I said, in the next couple months. How much is that connection you guys have with your teammates um, a part of the identity of this group? And how much does that make? We hear you guys all talk about how you play for each other. I mean, it, it really that's a cliche that you hear a lot. It, it's yeah. pretty clear that everyone wearing this blue jersey means it. It's huge, man. Like, because, like, I'm a defensive lineman, right? So I don't necessarily deal with the offense. You know, but I have guys on the offensive side of the ball that I'm very close with. You know, so so I like when I get free time, I try to go spend my time with with some of the offensive guys. Like you know, I, I go against Stan and and Jamarcus all day. So you know, what I'm saying when I get a little free time, I go hang out with them, talk a little, you know, talk with them for a little bit. But I also go talk to guys like Dembski, Rasheed Bailey, Kenny Lawler, Dalton Sean. I talk to Zach. Sometimes, you know, me and Zach are very good. You know, our, our daughters are very, our daughters are very close. Our wives are very close. So me and him, we talk all the time. So I talk to Zach. I'll talk to, uh, I'll talk to Dakota. I'll talk to Drew Brown. I'll talk to Brady, Johnny, Sergio, Jameson. Like I talk, I'm talking to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like defensive guys too. You know, I, I, I'm always talking to. You no, know, you're the man of the people when I'm you're hanging with the kickers defense, and the punters. Defensive guys, but you know, man, it's everybody. Man, everybody gets some. Everybody gets some love from me, and and I just want at the end of the day, when the season's over, or when like this may be the last game for 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 any for one of these guys. You might you never know, and I want them to. I don't want them to be like, man, uh, my last my last time playing. Like, man, Willie didn't Willie didn't speak to me. Or when somebody came up, oh man, do you know Willie Jefferson? I don't want them to be like, oh no, I I knew he was on my team, but we never talked or we never spoke. I want. Like if somebody would say, "Man, you know, uh, you know Willie Jefferson," I want him to be like, "Yeah, man, I know Willie Jefferson. Man, that was one of my one of my best friends or one of my good friends or whatever. We used to talk all the time and all that, like all that good stuff. I don't never want anybody to bring my name up and anybody else have anything bad to say or you know what I'm saying, not bad, but you know, not not something good to say. People will remember the laughs, but they'll also remember the sacks, and I know that is the focus. Last one for you, Willie. Um, you guys have been here before. This was the goal from when you guys broke training camp at the beginning of the season. How would you describe both the level of uh, excitement within the room, but also your confidence level that um, you can uh, be on the right side of the scoreboard at the end of Sunday night? Man, everything's high. The energy's high. The excitement's high. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that we are very confident in ourselves and our abilities, and we're going to come out here and play a tough, hard-nosed Winnipeg football game. It's gonna be Winnipeg style football from the whistle to the to the to till you see fireworks going off at the end. Let's get it. Let's Good get luck it. on Sunday. Thank Thanks so very much. much, Willie. Thank you, thank you. Great stuff. Jeff Hamilton, Nick Dembski, Willie Jefferson. Tomorrow is the game time. 6 p.m. here in Hamilton. 
kick off five o'clock back in Winnipeg. Uh, Remo, considering this is our last order of business before the game, let's get a final official prediction from each of us for the game. What do you got tomorrow? Okay, I said on yesterday's show, 28-12 for the Bombers. I'm going to stick with that. I'm tempted to move the Bombers up to 31 on my uh, internal calculations, but no. 28-12. Uh, bombers, confident in that number. I would like it. I think I've got a Grey Cup ticket that's twenty-eight to six. Okay. So that would be that would be good. Um, but listen, I'm in at thirty-one thirteen. Um, I do think the Bombers covered the spread. I do think that um, they terrorized Cody Fajardo. And by the way, if you do want to put a little sprinkle on the game, go over to Coolbet and check out the exclusives because we do have a Winnipeg Sports Talk parlay, which is the Bombers to cover the spread of minus seven and a half. The Montreal team total under 19 and a half and the Bombers over three and a half sacks. And I believe that's in there at plus 375. So, uh, folks, wherever you're watching, enjoy the big game tomorrow. We'll be here in uh, Hamilton uh, taking it all in. And we'll be back with you on Monday to break it all down and kick off another week on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, have a great, great cup, everybody.